Hi, I'm JD, and what I'm going to be going over today is the concept of permutations and combinations. Permutations and combinations is really just a shortcut for counting and counting the size of your sample space, you know, the different possible outcomes that you can have. With permutations, order matters. Where with combinations, order does not matter. So with permutations, it's going to be something involving some sort of order or rank. So like first, second, third, etc. Or first, second, third. Uh, something like that. Or president. Vice President, Secretary, Secretary, not Secretary, might be a different language. Anyways, uh, Secretary, etc. There's a particular order to that. So since there's an order to it, or rank, or whatever, it's going to be permutations. The easiest way to think of is like in a race. If I have a total of three choices and I have first place, second place, and third place. And for sake of illustration, I have Bob, John, and Susie. Well, Bob getting first, John getting second, and Susie getting third would be one permutation. And then another one would be, you know, Susie, and then John, and then Bob. Even though I'm using the same people, right order matters so order matters here order does not matter like if I was selecting a group of people and I'm selecting three out of three that's just one <laughs> so you know Bob John and Susie no matter way I put them they're all in the same group right Susie John Bob Bob John Susie etc they're all in the same group, so or does it matter? So that's when you want to use combinations. N is going to be the total number of choices out of, you can think of, out of how many can I select, right? You have five people, so that's five choices, and then you select, let's say, either all five or three. If you select three, that's your R. Number selected. And with permutations, it's one at a time, right? So first, second, and then third. Now here it's going to be the same thing. Your n is going to be the total number of choices that you have. So it's going to be out of whatever, right? Let's say five people again. Out of five, right? That's the total number of choices. And then the number that you select is, let's say that you select three people out of the five, that three is your R. So again, R is number selected. Now, what's going to happen is permutations, if you have the same N and R, right, as combinations, you expect to have more permutations because order matters. Remember the John, Bob, and Susie scenario? Well, if I have three people, right, I can put it three way, three, you know, three in this place, and then, you know, two, and then et cetera. That gives me uh, six. Where, so that'd be six permutations selecting three out of three uh, because I can't double take on people 
right? If I I've already if I already use Bob, I can't use him again, right? He can't get both first and second. Uh, that's how permutations work. But think about the group situation again. If I have Bob, Susie, and John, no matter what order I put them in, you know, there's still one group. So there's only one group. So you can see how combinations, the number is going to be lower using the same N and the same R, where with permutations, you're going to have a lot more. So the formula for NPR, N factorial over N minus R factorial. And you just basically plug in the numbers and what's going to happen is things are going to cancel out. So you don't just have to write the entire factorial, just enough so that you can see the pattern and start crossing things off. And you should always get a whole number. It should never be negative and it should never be a fraction. With combinations, again you should always get a whole number. It shouldn't be negative and it shouldn't be a fraction. Now this is going to be slightly smaller, so you have n factorial, and then on the bottom it's going to be n minus r factorial times r factorial. And well let me review factorial real quick. Factorial, n factorial starts with n, and you multiply it by the number underneath it, by the number underneath it, etc. you know, uh, two times one. So let me give you some examples of factorials. So uh, five factorial would be five times four times three times two times one. Four factorial would be four times three times two times one. 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1. Notice it starts at the number, whatever the factorial number is, and then it keeps on decreasing by 1 until you get to 1. And it's multiplication signs in between. Uh, with some calculators, they already have this. Here, 5 times 4 is 20 times 6 would be 120. Uh, 4 factorial is 24, right? 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is, times 1 is 24. Uh, 3 factorial is 6. 2 factorial is 2, right? It's just 2 times 1. You have 1 factorial, which is just 1. And then 0 factorial, you assume that's just positive 1. Right, and that's it. Oh yeah, the factorial sign, if you can't see it, is like an exclamation point. And that's